us a list of questions that we can ask to address uh, during this meeting. Uh, I will focus on just two of them. Uh, what science cases could be drivers for uh, high performance computing in astrophysics? And what is the current state of the art? And I'm looking at now zoom in simulations. These are high resolution simulations of individual galaxies. So let me start by reminding you that the current picture of cosmic structure formation uh, tells us that uh, about 27% of the total mass energy of the universe is in the form of a still undetected elementary particle, which is predicted to arise in extension of the standard model of particle physics. There are huge ongoing efforts uh, to obtain experimental confirmation of such doctrinal particle through indirect deannihilation and decay processes and direct nuclear scattering detections. And this signature depends on the detailed distribution of dark matter on subgalactic scales that is extremely poorly known. We can measure the cosmic density uh, of dark matter to high precision. We don't know what the dark matter particle is. Yes, it behaves as cold dark matter. We can predict its fluctuation spectrum and simulate its clustering properties in the inner region, basically with no free parameters. That's not true when we go to warm dark matter and change the power spectrum on small, on small scales, so if we include self-interacting uh, dark matter, which has a self-interacting cross-section, uh, which is basically free parameter. But if it's cold dark matter, well, let's just start, start to resolve uh, scales of, uh, uh, you know, 10 to the minus 6 uh, solar masses or so. There are no free parameters. We can run simulations. Uh, basically with zero free parameters. Everything we need to know comes from the cosmic microwave background. Uh, while the cold dark matter paradigm has been extremely successful on large scale, uh, it is uh, the nature of the dark matter particle is best uh, tested on small scales. Uh, the properties of dark matter itself uh, will manifest by modifying uh, the structure of galaxy halos, uh, their substructure, the granularity of the continents. Uh, this is a uh, plot of the uh, uh, power spectrum, dimensional power spectrum in cold dark matter versus other processes as a function of wave numbers or fluctuations. This is the uh, mass scale involved. We go from cosmic scales to cluster to subgalactic scales. This is the scales I will be talking uh, next. So because of the details uh, with which we can observe it, the Milky Way presents an excellent opportunity to study dark matter, a sort of dark matter laboratory. So, so I would advocate uh, in this, in this fact that that's high resolution studies of, of Milky Way type of galaxies uh, should be put out on the next scale of the program. So, uh, a high performance science case for Milky Way dark matter would include questions like what is the phase space distribution of dark matter in the galactic halo? Do the dwarf satellites simulated in uh, Lambda CDM have CASPI or CORD uh, density profiles? There is information on that too. There are observations that are telling you, in fact, telling us that the dwarf galaxy have cores in their center rather than past. Is there a dark matter disk? Uh, what is, and in particular, what is the effect of dissipation of baryonic physics on the local dark matter distribution? These are all questions uh, we'd like an answer. Uh, in particular, how does the local dark matter phase space distribution affect the expected signal from direct detection experiment? There is a huge amount of money and effort from the physics community is being spent in uh, direct dark, dark matter detections. The interpretation of these uh, experiments rely on some assumption on the, on the velocity distribution functions of the dark matter particle. And traditionally, uh, it has been assumed that uh, this is a Maxwellian with a given velocity, uh, peak velocity. Uh, we know now from current simulation that that's not the case. There are deviations from the Maxwellian distributions, and you can see here the result of a simulation uh, which has a resolution of 50 parsecs or so. There are deviations. Uh, from the Maxwellian distribution, and that is going to affect interpretation of many of these results. Uh, there is another HPC case for, a, for another collisionless Milky Way component, and that stars. And so you can ask, and I think we should ask, what is the phase space distribution of stars in the Milky Way? Why is this relevant? Uh, well, there is 
the satellite called Gaia. Uh, its status is preparing for launch. If you go to the ESA uh, homepage, uh, the objectives are a global space astronautic mission. Gaia will make the largest, most precise 3D map of our galaxy by surveying more than a billion stars. Our best simulation of Milky Way type of galaxy today, which includes gas and uh, stars, uh, they typically have you know, a few million stars. Okay, they are clearly uh, insufficient uh, to interpret the avalanche of data uh, that we'll be getting in a few years. Uh, this is a uh, uh, table that has already been put uh, in explained to some extent uh, by Joel. Uh, this is the state of the art in body simulations. Um, uh, here from large scales down to uh, Milky Way type of scales. These are the simulations I'll be talking about. Uh, number of cores, uh, memory, the space, number of particles. Okay? And so uh, from big boxes uh, like uh, those uh, four uh, for cosmology down to cluster scale down to Milky Way type of scale. You can see uh, the number of cores over which this simulation will be run, they are typically, they can exceed tens of thousands of cores, only when you go to big boxes, large cosmological volume, uh, where those simulations scale as well. When you do zoom in simulations, you zoom in into uh, the region of galaxies, uh, you see this is state of the art, and we're going to discuss those in a moment. They are typically run on a few dozen cores because they don't scale over uh, Total number of particles from 55. Uh, uh, 550 uh, billions here, uh, down to a few billion uh, in the case of subcollective scales. And uh, a point that has already been made is that computational demands do not scale uh, solely with uh, the number of embody particles, but depends on the degree of nonlinearity which is resolved in your simulation. So mean simulations uh, have reached higher density, the dynamical time scale is shorter, uh, they require more time steps. They don't balance well. A galactic scale around like Galactia 2 required about the same amount of core hours as the co cosmic scale simulation we laid in 2, but the latter did employ 10 times as many particles. Okay. So if you want to, these are uh, the numbers that I'm showing uh, you there. Um, let's see, core hours. Uh, a few uh, billions, a few hours. Uh, for this zooming simulation, as many. As uh, the uh, simulation there, I'm looking for uh, millions of viewers. This is Silver River, uh, the largest uh, embodied Milky Way uh, simulation. It was run using the PKD graph uh, to code by Joachim Stadel uh, and the water. Uh, well, you can ask them. Uh, more information is on any level of refinement. Uh, the largest uh, refinement has 50. Uh, billion uh, particle, um, a uh, particle mass of 100 solar masses. So, in principle, if you knew how, uh, where stars are from, you could follow the dynamics uh, of uh, massive stars precisely at a softening of 27 parts. Uh, the challenge here, uh, we run uh, SR1 uh, on uh, 15,000 cores on Jaguar. It is still as equal 5. It took 2.5 million CPU hours to go from 0 0.100 uh, to uh, roughly 5, 146 terabyte of data. Uh, we estimate, I think Joachim did estimate that we finish Silver River down to 0, 0. We need 35 uh, million CPU hours. So this is not exhaustive, but it's not too far. So in fact, we can finish it. So that's state of the art. What are those type of simulations that have been telling us over the last few years? They told us that galaxy formation is a clumpy affair. Uh, there's a lot of material there that is not uh, phase mixed. Uh, there are sub adults and clumps uh, in configuration space, and, and their distribution will affect the annihilation rate, which is important for indirect detection. The annihilation rate is uh, proportional to the uh, dark matter density square integrated along the line of sight. There are structures in velocity space, uh, streams, uh, degree flows, shells, plumes, and sheets. Their uh, distribution will affect the neutral scattering rate, which depends on the density of the dark matter, 
and the velocity distribution function. This is what is important for a direct detection experiment. Uh, those simulations I probe some elements, fun this elements function over five uh, orders of magnitude. They have provided the first estimate of the dark matter annihilation signal expected from Milky Way sub halos. Uh, we have been able to resolve up to four, four levels of the sub substructure reality. Uh, there is substructure dwarf galaxy satellites. Uh, the Milky Way has their own substructure, and you can resolve. Uh, those level, and they show that the velocity distribution function of dark matter particles is not the max radial, as it assumed in the standard halo models. Uh, these, of course, are average over, over uh, shells of one kpc, and we have a resolution perhaps of 100 parsecs. We'd like to do better. We want the exa exascale and, and beyond the uh, science driver, and uh, we want to look at the phase space distribution of dark matter on solar system scale. And you can compute how, how, how much computing time you really need to do that. But that's what, in principle, we need. Right? Uh, those simulations have also uh, created new controversies, a number of them. Uh, they end up uh, on the news. Uh, most of the time, we're talking about dwarf galaxies, uh, which do not seem to fit. Uh, the standard scenario, a number of problems that have been known uh, for uh, a decade or more, for, for 15 years or more, uh, like the missing satellite problem, the fact that if you look at the dark matter distribution in the uh, galactic halo, this is clear on other simulation uh, with the KD graph 2, and you compare that with distribution of luminous matter in the Milky Way, well, uh, the conclusion is a lot of those problems must be done. Why aren't they forming stars? So that's an issue that we still don't understand very well. Uh, and body simulation predict. Uh, that satellites or dwarf galaxies have cuspy profile. Uh, they are found uh, to have core profile, both in the field as well as in the human satellites. Uh, a new problem uh, that has appeared is called the too big to fail problem. If you look at the most massive satellites, which are predicted in n body simulation, and you look at their uh, velocity profile as a function of distance, and you compare that with your observed uh, velocities. Uh, of uh, luminous Milky Way satellites derived from the kinematics of their stars, then you find that there are plenty too many uh, massive systems which are very high uh, velocities in the simulation, but not in the real data. So, uh, clearly, you can make a clear case for uh, this type of galaxy formation studies uh, to be a multi scale physics problem. Uh, that require IPC. Uh, take the case, for example, for Segwit 2. This is a recent discovery. Discovered this year, Segwit 2 is the least massive galaxy known. It's a satellite of the Milky Way, uh, 40 kiloparsec away from the center. Uh, 900 uh, solar luminosities. It's a tiny system. A velocity dispersion of 2.2 kilometers per second. An alpha half light radius of 50 parsec. The mass within the half light radius is only 10 to the 5 solar masses. It's got a mass to light ratio of less than 360 or so, but mostly made of old stones. Okay, so this is a satellite of the Milky Way that has got a uh, metallicity that is uh, well above the extrapolation of the mass metallicity relationship. If you look at the paper, the discovery paper says, Segway 2 may be, may be uh, the remnants of a tidal district uh, bigger system. Uh, we'd like to simulate uh, some of these uh, uh, systems here. You need to resolve their stellar core, 50 parsec or so, and uh, outdoor cosmological simulations. Uh, that's what, what we can do today. So, first, you need to go beyond uh, cold and conditionless dark matter only simulation. Uh, you can take two routes. You can uh, look at alternative dark matter physics, warm dark matter. Uh, where there is a cutoff in the, uh, in the power spectrum, and you suppress small scale power, self interacting dark matter. I think the most interesting case here is to include baryonic physics. You need to do that anyway if you want to compare with observation. That needs to, uh, it requires hydrodynamic simulation, which includes gas cooling, star formation, feedback, and power flows. And so you solve the hydrodynamic equation. Uh, in 3D, you have a variety of techniques to do that, from moving mesh to AMR uh, to a spirit. 
So there's a lot of effort in the community, a lot of effort uh, within uh, this audience uh, towards those type of simulations. These are different type of studies uh, compared to what we heard so far. What we heard so far are Euclid type of large cosmological boxes uh, where you do galaxy population studies. You try to understand the mass dependence and environment dependent evolution of galaxies over cosmic time. You should take this, the case for this type of simulation, zoom in, high resolution simulation is more galaxy metabolic status. You try to understand how a few galaxies in London CDM uh, with uh, the basic processes which of ingestion, info digestion, ISM physics and star formation uh, and excretion outflows. How do these processes govern the global properties of a few galaxies in London CDM? Uh, so I think uh, uh, I will uh, quibble with the idea that every time we talk about extra scale, uh, we're going to uh, simulate bigger boxes. Uh, this goes into opposite uh, uh, kind of direction. The box the size stays the same. Uh, you try to increase the resolution. So the basic ingredients of baryonic physics are known: metal dependent gravity, cooling, photonization. Accretion and variance uh, via hot and cold flows, star formations that are given feedback, heating and chemical enrichment uh, of, from supernovae. Uh, the challenge again is, is modeling now a system that has got gas and stars as well as dark matter uh, on a number of scales and processes that are intensively multi scale. Uh, you can see that, for example, by computing. Uh, the sphere of influence of the supermassive black holes, or the supermassive black holes that we see at the center of galaxies. If you take the mass of the black hole uh, of the Milky Way, uh, four uh, billion solar masses divided by the velocity dispersion of the stars around it, you get a sphere of influence of one percent. The linear radius of the Milky Way is about 200 kiloparsecs or so, and you know that uh, processes uh, like accretion uh, of gas into the black hole are going to produce. Uh, light, radiation, outflows, etc., which are going to affect the large scale. So, so the uh, complexity here is trying to uh, you know, simulate those uh, subject multi scale process. Uh, people have tried to do that for a while, of course, a much higher, much lower resolution than is possible today. And for 20 years, they have failed uh, because simulations with gas have typically produced. Uh, Galaxies that don't look like the Milky Way, for example. You can simulate a galaxy like the Milky Way of 10 to the 12 solar masses or so. You'd like to produce a disk uh, like that is seen in the Milky Way. This is a real, this is not a simulation, that's a real Milky Way. Uh, this is how simulation looked like a few years ago. This is a typical simulation of one million particle, SPH particle. If you use SPH or so, uh, they would produce systems. Uh, that don't have enough angular momentum. The disks would be too small. Most particles would uh, be in a large non-rotating spheroid. Uh, that, and so the gas would collect to the center and form stars, and you wouldn't get a disk uh, that is large enough. Uh, large flat ratios were too high, no multi galaxies, external stellar mass overall. This was uh, the situation a few years ago. Uh, a number of, of, of recent simulations have done much better. Uh, this is a simulation that we ran uh, two years ago. I think it's still the highest resolution uh, simulation of the Milky Way type of galaxies, which produce something uh, that does resemble the Milky Way. And this is a prototype of new generation of hyper simulation, where new generation means high resolution and with the right physics rather than necessarily uh, a new hyper solver. Uh, this in particular was a cosmological SPH simulation with zoom in initial condition, uh, with the code uh, gasoline, 20 times uh, better resolution than previously done. Uh, again, gas cooling, UV heating, uh, supernova blast wave feedback. And the simulation, uh, the resolution allowed us to reach density that are high enough uh, to, to simulate. Uh, so it's not molecular clouds, at least the environment, the high density environment where stars in fact can form. Uh, this is the largest simulation so far. Uh, I'm not bragging uh, about it. It, uh, it took about uh, 1 million CPU hours to run. Uh, it took a long time because, again, it's a zoom-in simulation. They don't scale very well. Okay. 
maybe maybe new codes, maybe a report uh, can do better, can scale better the simulation for typical design uh, on on uh, about a thousand cores or so, and that's an issue. Uh, so uh, the entire uh, Aries uh, uh, suite of simulation has been running uh, for about six million CPU hours. So, so uh, so a bit of time in, uh, in the U.S. and here in Switzerland. Uh, what are the secrets to get decently looking Milky Way type of galaxies? Uh, you have to use a high supernova threshold which enables a star formation threshold which enables the development of a uh, cluster of uh, a And you have to have some recipes uh, to inject energy and create outflows. So that's my last line, uh, future progress and challenges uh, with zooming uh, HPC uh, cosmological simulation. Some of these, of these have already been mentioned. We need better resolution. Uh, the problem is intrinsically uh, in uh, need of better resolution, whether this is N-body only or N-body plus gas. Uh, so far, our typical resolution is 100 parsecs or so. Uh, we like to break it down uh, to 10 parsecs on this. So we solve the molecular clouds where star formation uh, is occurring to get a better idea of the granularity and phase space uh, of the uh, dark matter distribution. Uh, there is no point to resolve subgrid physics if you don't know what that physics is. So we need better physics modeling uh, before we increase the resolution. Uh, somebody said we need to be able to write equations which you can integrate in those codes. And I don't think we are there. Uh, though there is a large community effort uh, happening as we speak. Uh, we need better use of existing and, and as well as, of course, uh, future uh, computing power, better codes, better scaling. Uh, the hardware is improving much faster than our ability uh, to improve the software, uh, etc. So perhaps we might want to uh, skip uh, one scale like you skip a model of the iPhone. You go from iPhone 3 to iPhone 5, uh, uh, you skip iPhone 4. Uh, perhaps we should consider that because it will take a huge amount of time uh, to improve the scale. We need uh, better access to simulation to maximize scientific return. Uh, we run some big simulation for a while. We wanted to make those simulations public uh, so people can use it and maximize the science. While we do other simulation, that's not easy to do. It's hard, you have to have storage, you have to have the ability of transferring data, uh, uh, a lot of data uh, far away. I think Alex might talk about how we transfer the super hero simulation from the supercomputing center uh, down to Hopkins, and that was a huge effort uh, to transfer 150 terabytes of data. And, and as somebody said already, we need more people uh, working on these areas. And that's what you're